So the camera may be a little bit bumpy in this one because I decided to do another random car vlog again. This time from, as the title will probably suggest, the Golf R32. And uh, I thought, well, if I'm already driving, I may as well use it as a minute to do a vlog, talk about plans for both the cars, the Golf and the Evo, and basically a general automotive update. <laughs> so as far as the Evo goes, first of all, obviously the Evo is the newer of the two, the newer to me at least, and I've just ordered a full set of brakes for the Evo, discs and pads. Those are due to arrive in a couple of days. There are black, black discs, matte black, because they're uh, treated, like heat treated, which will rub off over time as the brakes get used. And uh, they weren't as expensive as I was expecting for an Evo. Uh, they're actually cheaper than the V10 Touareg's brakes, which is surprising to me. Um, I'm hoping that they are the right fit, because obviously this was never a UK vehicle, so hopefully, fingers crossed and I plan to get those fitted as soon as I can because the Evo's got, and it had this when I bought it, it's got that kind of s -s 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 sound that you hear sometimes when your pads and discs need changing. Usually that's caused by uh, warped discs, which is something I've had happen a couple of times in my cars, usually from as soon as I bought them, so previous owners. So when I change my brakes, I like to generally get them done all at once. So then I know that the front and rear, you know, everything's as good as it can be, really. As far as the Golf goes, I'm not really planning to do anything drastic to it anytime soon. But I do have both MOTs coming up for the Evo and the Golf, same month of the year, funnily enough. For those who don't live in the UK, an MOT is basically your mandatory uh, yearly car check, wherein... It's like a, a yearly certificate to verify the roadworthiness of the vehicle. So exhaust emissions, condition of the car, make sure all the lights are working, all that kind of stuff. And uh, you do it once a year, like I said, costs 50 pounds. And uh, basically I've booked in with the garage to do a mock MOT with both cars so that then I can keep the pristine history of both vehicles. So if something is gonna need changing, I can find out before the MOT and get it done ahead of time instead of it failing an MOT and having to take it again, because that just doesn't look good. It, it makes it look like the car hasn't been taken care of. So I've got them both having a mock MOT, then they'll both have their real MOT. And then aside from that, for the rest of the year, I'm hoping to get both the Golf and the Evo serviced I was originally hoping to get them serviced by their respective manufacturers, so get the Volkswagen done at Volkswagen, get the Evo done by Mitsubishi, but I think I may actually go for some kind of... some kind of uh, specialist garage, because I'm thinking the Golf, you know, I'm sure Volkswagen would service the Golf, but Volkswagen, I've looked into their prices before, and they're pretty expensive. I guess you can probably say that for most, you know, franchise dealers doing servicing, but the Evo is the one that I'm more concerned about because, yes, Mitsubishi, you know, it is their car, but as far as I know, the Evo 7 was never officially sold in the UK. Certainly not the GTA. I think from the 8 onwards was sold here. So even if they have experience with it, they're not going to be necessarily the most... Uh, skilled with the car. I think I'll be better off trying to find like a specific Evo specialist and get it serviced with them. I also want to do a couple of other things with both cars, but especially the Evo. I want to uh, get a couple of modifications done to the gearbox, because with those autos, it's uh, from what I've heard and had recommendations from other owners, it's more preventative stuff with those gearboxes, just to make them that much stronger and last that much longer, and especially on, a, on an Evo on an Evo, even, with the mileage that mine's got, preventative stuff is essential. It may have already been done, but at least a specialist can take a look at it and tell me if it has or not. Um, and then aside from that, probably toward the end of the year, I want to get both cars uh, coated underneath, rust-proofed. It's basically like a grease coating, and uh, that will be one of the more uh, affordable things that I want to do to it. The servicing will probably be the most expensive. The gearbox work on the Evo will probably be a bit more expensive, but then the, the rust proofing, probably not so much. Uh, I'm going to leave that toward the end of the year because for the most part, you don't really need to worry about that in summer. So there's no point in spending out that money, paying out that money for something that I don't need yet. And 
then not needed it. And then the general weathering of the car might take some of that away anyway, so I may as well get it done as the weather starts to get bad, or just before, and then the cars will be ready to go for winter. Especially because both this one and the Evo are both Japanese imports, as many of you know. So in Japan, apparently, they don't salt the roads, whereas here in the UK we do, and obviously that's to improve grip in snowy conditions. The downside to it is the salt uh, causes cars to corrode very quickly. At least cars that aren't, uh, you know, used to it here, in effect. And from something like a Japanese import, where they don't do that, it can ruin your car really quick. So I definitely want to get that done. So yeah, I want to uh, get the brakes fitted on the Evo, get them both serviced at some point. They're both going to be MOT'd at some point, get them both rust-proofed. As far as the Golf, I think I'll probably have to do the Golf's maybe pads, possibly discs, but probably pads at some point. And eventually, I'll have to do the tyres, obviously, on both cars, but that should be a ways off yet anyway. But yeah, hopefully they'll be all right on the MOT. I'm more confident with the Golf than the Evo, purely because I'm more familiar with the Golf. Um, whereas with the Evo, I, I think you can, you can feel a difference with the two cars, because with the Golf... The fact that this one was completely unmodified for a start is usually a sign that it hasn't been ragged. So it wasn't a boy racer's car, it was somebody who really loved the car. Whereas with the Evo, you know that the Evo's been ragged. It's kind of the point of an Evo. So even though I don't rag my cars, previous owners almost certainly did. So yeah. But yeah, I guess that's the general update, not a particularly long video. And then aside from that, because obviously that's mostly maintenance stuff, the only other thing that I really have in mind is for the Evo, but I need to do a bit more research on it and get some more recommendations. I've joined a couple of Evo owners groups, uh, and specifically a GTA owners group, and doubtless they'll have the best information. The only thing really that I want to do to the Evo is get it fitted with a loud dump valve, purely for the cool sound, because at the moment the GTA has a recirculating system, so it has no dump valve, because it, it keeps it in the system, so it doesn't have that kind of sound. And I want that, if possible at least. And uh, it can be done, I've seen it done, I've heard it done, but I believe for the GTA you have to do it in a more specific way, uh, a different kind of dump valve. Uh, I believe I've heard you have to change it from a, I think it's a map center sensor to a MAF sensor or the other way around, I can't remember which. But yeah, a couple of things there that I would like to do, but that's more on like the vanity side, whereas the others are more, you know, servicing maintenance and care of the vehicle. But uh, yeah, I guess that's about it for the updates overall. Nothing too crazy for the vehicles. And just keeping them in the best shape they can be in. I don't rag my cars anyway, so they live a pretty easy life with me. And uh, yeah, just give them the best chance they've got of staying good. So that's it for the R32 vlog, the Evo vlog, whatever I end up calling it. And uh, if you haven't already seen the video of the Evo, the announcement video and the big reveal, or the review that I did for it, or maybe even you haven't seen the Golf R32 video, then of course you can find those on the channel, and I'll see you next time. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.